we're going to take your Windows 11 installation from boring and bloated to customized and controlled. All right, so I got you introduced to Windows 11. It's time to take full control over it, to customize it the way that you want, to control it, as some might say, the Linux way. People often say Linux is better than Windows when it comes to customization or control, and that Windows and Linux are fundamentally different here. But I'd say that they're not as different as you think, because sure, Windows doesn't provide you a whole lot of control built in, but you can do it with third-party tools. And realistically, all you're interacting with in your Linux desktop environment is a bunch of tools developed by different people designed to be put together to do the same purpose. Downloading a tweak tool for Windows should theoretically be no different than downloading GNOME tweak tool, which everyone immediately recommends if you're using a GNOME-based distribution. So let's figure this out. I will say right off the bat, this is an advanced guide for Windows. This is, you know, for those of you who already know how to use your computer and get around it and things like that, if you're looking for the beginner's guide to customization and figuring out Windows 11, I have a bunch of those videos linked in the playlist in the description. This is for those of you who've been using Windows a while and know what you're doing or don't mind messing things up because, oh boy, there are a lot of tools we're gonna cover in this video and you should remember to pick and choose the ones that you want from it because if you go download them all at once, they're all gonna offer, well, some of them are gonna offer the same customizations that start conflicting with each other and you're gonna start breaking stuff and part of the point of this is also to de-bloat windows which you don't want to add more bloat after you take out microsoft's bloat that's my favorite thing is seeing gaming people with their windows and they're de-bloating it and then they add in a bunch of their own bloat you haven't really accomplished much we're gonna to try to work around that first and foremost i do want to talk about de-bloating and your privacy settings there are two different tools that I would recommend for this. The first one is WinArrow Tweaker, which has been around for a while to work on a few different versions of Windows. And then there's another one called This Is Win 11 for Windows 11 specifically. Now I prefer that latter one, This Is Win 11 overall. Uh, I will point you to a guide from Craft Computing, linked in the description below. Jeff covered this tool in depth. I'm gonna kinda skim over some of it here and you can check out his video for a full walkthrough. But it introduces you to all of Windows 11's changes to the start menu, the taskbar, you know, how all the things work. It allows you to uninstall some of the junk that Microsoft pre-installs onto your system. It allows you to disable telemetry, fix the privacy issues, revert to Windows 10's file explorer if you'd like, things like that. I do recommend going through these carefully because if you just click next a bunch and then get to all the checkboxes and just leave them all checked by default and click apply, you're going to get rid of a lot of stuff and you're going to change a lot of settings that you may not have wanted. So if you want, for example, later on I'm going to show you how to get widgets on your desktop. If you uninstall the widgets, you can't put them back on the desktop for the most part other than one of the tools adds new widgets to the desktop, but like you don't want to, you, you could really break your system, you could really bork things up here. So I recommend going through these carefully and choosing the options you genuinely want. For example, by default it disables all the cool, you know, snap assist features, and I think those are really handy. I want to leave them in. Things like that. This also installs the classic Windows Media Player for some reason, which was quite a throwback. One of the things that it, un it auto-checks to uninstall and disable in m multiple of these settings menus are the Xbox services, the Xbox, ga Xbox game app, things like that. Which, if you're wanting to play video games on your computer, you may want those installed, especially if you're using Game Pass or anything like that, so I'd recommend definitely unchecking those. The game DVR you don't need if you don't plan on using. We're gonna cover when Arrow Tweaker in this second section here as we start talking about a lot of tools to change the Windows taskbar as well as the start menu. When Arrow Tweaker lets you do some of the privacy and de-bloating settings that this is Win 11 does, but it also lets you restore classic context menus, the classic Explorer, Windows 10's entire taskbar, you can just swap back into place, which is pretty cool. And then if you're using that older taskbar, you can change the location and size of it. Doesn't work on the new one, only the old one. You can also change control over appearance, colors, etc. It doesn't work perfectly, uh, but it can be used in this place. Again, I prefer this as Win 11 for most of those features, and I have some alternative tools to recommend here in a moment. However, if you do enable the classic Windows 10 taskbar instead of the Windows 11 one, and get one of those alternative start menus, then you can use a tool that I have used since Windows 7 called 7 Plus Taskbar Tweaker that works on 7, 8, and, and 10, but doesn't work on 11 unless you have the classic taskbar installed. And then this allows you to adjust things like at what point Windows groups, you know, Windows group together on the taskbar, when text labels are shown, spacing between icons, all this kinds of stuff. And I, like I said, I used it on pretty much every Windows 7 through 10 installation that I had leading up to 
the Windows 11 upgrade now. There are some alternative start menu replacement tools to recommend. I'm going to cover a couple here and then the one that I recommend. So first and foremost, you have Open Shell, which is formerly known as Classic Shell. A lot of people started using this in the Windows 8 days to get you your Windows 7 start menu back. And then same with 8.1 and 10. Uh, the Classic Shell development has been carried over into what is now called Open Shell. And then there's also Stardock's Start 11, which is paid software, but it's only like five bucks. Pretty nice. I like a separate program, which also gives you start menu control called Start All Back. This is also a paid program, though it's only like $5, otherwise it's a 30-day trial. However, currently it's rejecting my PayPal, so I'm just going to use the trial for now and use the Gumroad Pay option later on. But Start All Back is super powerful. Here you can swap the start menu between a multitude of different styles, between the Windows 10 style, the Windows 8 style, or a classic Windows 7 start menu style, which also resembles Vista a little bit. You can replace the start menu button itself, the start button, with either you know a couple variants of it or some kind of modernized takes on the Windows Vista 7, 8 start menu buttons, or you can even add your own if you import your own icons, but you have to format it right, like it kept showing up upside down and too big for, you gotta tweak your icon size for it, but you could completely replace it with your own start menu logo, which is pretty cool. Brings me back to when I was going on vacation with my family as a kid and some of the hotel room computers running Windows XP, people would have edited the start menu for where the start button said like, cuss words or something. It was always really weird. The replacement start menu, regardless of what style you choose, is blazing fast, even for search, and it gets rid of the web search, which is really nice. You have full control to adjust sizes and margins, put the taskbar wherever you like, and add your own stuff to the taskbar as well. You can even set it up where the start button stays over on the left, but your actual taskbar icons stay in the center, which conveniently is exactly how I have my KDE panel set up in Linux, where I have the main application launcher over on the left, but the actual task manager, which has all your open windows and stuff, sits right in the middle. So this allows me a little bit of unification of my workflows here, and I think it works really well. And then you can also set up segments to where it only shows the start menu behind your specific segments of that taskbar. So your system tray, the start menu, and your icons in the center with the rounded corners, which is nice. You got full color and font control in place. You can also fix Windows Explorer by adding back in the ribbon and command bars, the old details pane, etc. Rounded TB is another free tool uh, which allows you to give that segmented and rounded off look to the taskbar that Start All Back gives as well. From there, you can combine with a tool like Translucent TB, which is available on GitHub or the Microsoft Store for free, which allows you to control the tr transparency of the taskbar and the start menu. And then you can set up dynamic transparency triggers based on whether you have an active window at all, whether your window's maximized or not, whether you have the start menu open, and etc for some neat effects. So for example, I have mine set up with Start All Back and Translucent TB so that by default, I just have the little segments of the start menu, but whenever I have a window maximized, it has the nice little acrylic looking taskbar shown up behind everything so that you have the full bar at the top. There's also a free tool on GitHub called Disable Rounded Corners that can just give you the boxy square look of Windows 10 back if you like it. In this third section here, we're going to talk about utilities to kind of enhance your Windows installation. First and foremost, you have Microsoft Edge Redirect. This allows you to redirect the search and being related links that would typically link out to Edge no matter what you do to your default browser instead of Edge. However, if you've used some of these tools to replace your start menu and get rid of the widgets and things like that, you may not have a need for this because you may never encounter that situation again. Alt-Drag is a neat program that lets you hold Alt and middle or right click to resize your windows really, really quickly and easily. This is really neat and something that has been implemented in some Linux distros or window managers for a while. However, I prefer Sizer 4. I think this is a spinoff of a previous program I used back in the Windows XP in seven days called just like Window Sizer. Uh, this allows you to resize an entire Windows contents to fit specific resolutions or aspect ratios. Very useful for screenshots and screen capture recordings. I used this a lot back in the day when I was recording old school RuneScape because by default it launches in the like 4x3, 5x4 window and I can just quickly you know, pull up the keyboard shortcut and tell it to run to where the window is sized to 1080p for proper capture. You can also set up custom sizes and things like that if you know, the contents of the window isn't sized correctly with the window and all of that. Twinkle Tray is a nice little utility that sits in your system tray and allows you to quickly have sliders to adjust the brightness of your monitor and not just like a post effects, like it's the actual brightness control of your monitor. And it works with multiple monitors on one system as well. Files, we finally have a modern feeling Explorer replacement. If you don't know, back in the Windows 8 days, I used, and this was also implemented for seven, but I primarily used it in the Windows 8 days called Clover. This was like a Chinese developed app that just kind of hijacked into Windows Explorer, probably wasn't super secure, but added native, well, native, 
tab support to Windows Explorer, and otherwise Explorer worked identical. This was super great because it just embedded into normal Explorer normally, unlike a lot of the Windows Explorer alternatives, which are these old archaic looking programs. And that was really handy, but after like 8.1 and then Windows 10 released, it started becoming much less usable and I never really got it working in Windows 10 again. And I've kind of been bummed about that and I've never really liked a lot of the alternative file managers and they don't often work with my A and B drive letters that I use. Files is a new open source program available on GitHub and the Microsoft Store that gives you not only tabs, but multi-view panes, you get better file previews, you get tagged files and folders to develop your own like searching and metadata system, kind of like Windows Vista had, which I don't understand why they abandoned. You got cloud integration for your cloud service mounting, you've got uh, Windows subsystem for Linux integration to access that storage, you got colors, you got themes to download, and it has the option to replace Windows Explorer as default if you'd like. It will say that you could potentially break it if something tries to call it and it doesn't work or something like that. So be careful or keep that in mind. It may be not the best choice, but you do have the option of fully replacing Explorer, Explorer in that regard, which is really neat. This is my new favorite file Explorer alternative, and I'm glad a buddy of mine finally found it a couple weeks ago. Next up, of course, I had to mention Wallpaper Engine. This is paid. I got mine on Steam, but it allows you to set up video wallpapers that can play back in a variety of frame rates that you can customize based on how much you want it using your system resources or draining battery if you're on a laptop. You can download for a ton, both from their Discover tab and the Steam Workshop. Thankfully, they finally added a, a filter to block out anime waifus because there were so many of them. Uh, and you can also make your own. So these can include music. So some of them will have music that plays in the background. That's really annoying. I always turn the volume down just in case. Uh, but some of them can be reactive to the sound that you have playing on your system to kind of have a visualizer effect going as well. Or you can make your own by importing video uh, files and things like that. So some of my backgrounds I had made for videos I can show as desktops as well. I love this tool. Again, it uses a lot of resources. It's going to be a complete waste of resources for a lot of people who are all about performance, but pretty neat. Next up, we have the wonderful tool that I've made videos on before called PyWin Context. This is developed by Dylan, one of the OBS developers, and it allows you to add scripting to your right-click context menu and add your own items to it and things like that. This has completely just changed my life and my workflow for the better. I've set it up with a bunch of different FFmpeg scripts for video conversion, remuxing MKV files, all sorts of stuff, extracting audio from video files, converting VP9 to transparent background AVIs, you know, all sorts of stuff. It has made my workflow so much more efficient by just having all of these on the right-click context menu, and then you can save and back up your settings and things like that. It is an amazing tool. 11 Clock just got recommended on one of my Halo Infinite streams on Twitch. Thank you to whoever mentioned that. 11 Clock allows you to add back your system clock to secondary monitors, which Windows 11 doesn't let you do for some reason. Of course, we have Power Toys, which is something that used to be a big thing in Windows XP, and then they kind of abandoned for a while, and now it's back. It's developed by Microsoft, and it's a bunch of little system utilities that give you more control over your computer, which is freaking awesome. You've got tools to manually keep your PC from sleeping if you have something going that you know it'll interrupt when it falls asleep. You can resize images and bulk batch rename files. You've got the Fancy Zones Window Placement Manager, which is incredible, though with a lot of issues that I'm not a fan of, but certainly helps on ultra wide monitors. If you get it set up right, you've got a system wide color picker, etc. Definitely recommend installing power toys and playing around with because there's a lot of cool functionality you can enable. Next up, we have two tools for managing widgets and things like that. First is Live Tiles Anywhere, which allows you to turn basically any application sort of into a live tile, either on your start menu or on the desktop as a widget, which is pretty cool. And if the app itself doesn't support live tiling, then it will just pull the notifications for that app instead and display those on the tile, which is kind of neat, gives you a central hub to kind of access all of these. And then there's Widget Launcher, which basically gives you, instead of the wi widgets panel that Windows 11 introduces, which is pretty limiting, this gives you the full like desktop gadgets experience back, like from Windows Vista. Of course, there's two programs I recommend on every Windows installation, and that is 7-Zip as your archive manager for zip files, 7-Z files, .rar files, things like that. The best archive manager for Windows that I've ever used, and I've used it for like 15 years now, and it's free and open source. And then TerraCopy to actually serve as your file copying mechanism. It can actually just replace when you hit Control-Z and Control-V, it'll pop up. It does multi-threaded file copies. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff like pause them, resume them. You can do hash checking and all that stuff. Uh, it comes as a free version, and then you can pay for additional features. I've never felt the need to pay for it, and I've been using it literally since the XP days where file copying could like crash out of nowhere 
repair and break everything. So, yeah, just want to recommend those. And, of course, you can change your cursor. I do not recommend downloading programs that do it for you. That was a classic way to get malware back in the day. Uh, but you can download cursors and either manually replace them yourself, which is really annoying and could get wiped at any moment, or... I recommend downloading pack, you know, cursor packages from sites like DeviantArt where they provide a .ini file. You right click the INI and click install and it sets up the theme for you and then you have a nice custom cursor. And then lastly for this section we have another Microsoft product. This is a Microsoft Garage product called Mouse Without Borders which is basically Synergy if you've ever heard of that. It lets you use one mouse to control multiple computers all running Windows of course back and forth which is really neat. And then we have our bonus section. Since I kept comparing this to the Linux workflow and Linux customization, this section is actually Linux. First and foremost, download the new uh, preview of WinGet, which is a command line package manager for Windows, allows you to easily install and set up automation on new systems for installing different programs without having to manually browse their websites and install them, which is already pretty awesome. Then there's an application called Win, well, it's a script, called WinFetch for PowerShell. If you've ever used Linux and used the little bash program called NeoFetch, which displays your system information, this is basically it, but runs on PowerShell, and according to the developers who made it, according to their benchmarks, it actually runs faster than NeoFetch runs on Linux, which is kind of interesting. You can set it up to automatically open when PowerShell opens, but I, I had issues fighting the profiles to get that to work and stopped bothering after a while. Of course, if you're not using the new Windows Terminal, the tabbed command prompt slash PowerShell slash Azure slash whatever together, uh, you should be. And before we get to my final mention, which is a big one, a word from this video's sponsor. I've been sharing my cooking experiments and progress with you all all year on Discord and Twitter, showing my grill adventures and fancy meals my wife and I have been making inside. While I'm not starting a cooking channel anytime soon, despite the requests, it has been fun. But can I be real with you for a sec? I love cooking and learning to cook and making something delicious that really gives you that feeling of just mm, when you're done. But I actually hate what comes before planning and prepping for meals. As a new dad, time is slim. Nights are hectic, and I, I, I rarely feel like I have the time to just sit down and actually plan out or prepare for the meals that I want to make during the week. And even when I do, I may not be in the headspace for it. HelloFresh helps eliminate those stressors while still allowing us to feel like we're eating like royalty, which is pretty nice. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. The weekly delivery helps you cut back on prep time and the cleanup afterwards and even has a wide variety of 20 minutes meals for those who really need to move fast. You know, the no time to cook, I have a, a, a meeting in like half an hour kind of people. The prepackaged ingredients means that most of the hard part is done for you with you just doing a little chopping, a little cooking and a lot of eating. Plus, you get things pre-portioned, so no more making meals for 10 when you mean to make a meal for two. My wife and I really enjoyed trying new things with some of these and discovering new meals that we'll probably make regularly now, and you get to keep the recipes. If you're struggling to cook your way through the holidays, head on over to HelloFresh.com and use code EPOSFOX14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. It's worth it. Even as a picky eater, I wasn't really sure about trying this kind of thing, but the recipes even call for situations where you could not include specific ingredients if you don't prefer them, and you get to pick the kind of meals you want in the first place. Again, that's HelloFresh.com and code EPOSVOX14 for up to 14 free meals plus three free gifts. Happy eating. And of course, lastly, I had to mention Windows 11 comes with Windows Subsystem for Linux with GUI support baked in. Now you have to run through all the steps to actually enable virtualization in your BIOS and then enable the Windows Subsystem for Linux and install it and get it updated. And I always end up running into some issues with that, which takes longer than it needs to. This is something that should theoretically just kind of be set up from the start. I don't know why it's not. And then you can download your favorite distribution from the Windows Store. So for example, I just downloaded Ubuntu here and now I can run a native Ubuntu instance basically within Windows. So you got the, the command prompt and everything but from there you can install and run GUI based apps so get it for text editing or you know Kden live with the full window manager and everything and then you can control your GTK themes and all of that for your window themes from there which is just absolutely wild like the fact that I can just have without the old virtual box like seamless mode like I can just have effectively native Windows and Linux apps side by side running as if they're on the same system and the shortcuts get added to the start menu all the same. Like it is just mind boggling. And so we have gone from this to this. Whether you like it or not, of course you can pick and choose your settings along the way. 
but this kind of helps unify my workflow and gives you a lot more of that control that you have in Linux over your Windows machine. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any more utilities to recommend, we have a useful stuff channel over on our Discord server. Please go recommend them there so that we can spread the word to more of you all. Hope you enjoyed. Hit the like button if you did. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. I'm Vox, the stream professor. I'll see you next time.